Hey everybody, welcome back to another round of engineering, and let's keep going. So I thought that I would introduce a couple of additional circuits, and in particular I was thinking of the introduction of dependent supplies. So the idea of dependent sources, I guess might be a better way to say it, sources. So in the example circuit that I have drawn here to the left, we notice that we have the circle, which represents the independent sources. And then you notice I have this diamond here, and that's how we indicate that a source is dependent. Now coupled with that, you notice that I have given you an equation. I'll underline that right here. I've given you an equation that relates the dependency. Now we look, and the first thing I should ask you, looking at the dependent source in this circuit, is, is the source a potential supply or a current supply? It is a potential supply. Notice how we have the plus minus Similarly, we would use the same notation with the independent source. You notice that we have the plus or minus here. That's how we indicate that it is a potential supply. So this dependent source is a voltage, voltage supply. And then the next question I have for you is what is the dependence of this source? Does this voltage supply depend on a current somewhere else in the circuit, or does it depend on a potential difference somewhere else in the circuit? And that's where we look at the equation that's given, and we notice that it's 8I2. In other words, the potential of this supply is 8 times I2. So it is a voltage supply that depends on current. So it is a current controlled, and I guess I'll have to rewrite this here, voltage supply. And sometimes you'll see this abbreviated as CCVS. Again, it's just conveying what the dependency is. So we have a current controlled voltage supply. Now, I guess you could also think, uh, well, what this, this 8 here has units, and it would be uh, uh, volts per amp would be what the units of that 8 would have to be in order for everything to work out properly. Just a little byline. So, let us go ahead and, and analyze this circuit. I want to know the currents flowing through all of the branches. So let's go through our little checklist. And the first thing that we should be thinking about is how many nodes do we have? So let's, excuse me, let me do that in red here. So the question, first of all, how many essential nodes do I have? Good, three. This bottom one is an entire node, so that's one. Then we have a second essential node right here. I'll label that one as A. We have a second essential node here as B. And then I guess this whole rigmarole at the bottom um, yeah, I'll leave it unlabeled. Okay, I'll leave it as C here. Cute. Arbitrarily chosen location. So we have three essential nodes. How many essential branches do we have? Okay, you got it. Well, let's see. We have one, two, three, four, and then five. Don't forget the one that connects A and B. So we actually have five essential branches here. And again, that just dictates how many equations we're gonna need. Okay, let's go ahead, let's label in our currents. Now you notice 
that the current controlled voltage supply, it, it specifies the current I2. And now that one's already labeled. So whatever the current is flying, flowing through this 5 ohm resistor, that is the current that will determine the value of the potential drop. Now, one of the things I always struggled with when I was first learning about this stuff, how, how does the voltage supply know that this is the current? That piece, there's you know some sort of other electrical wiring that's not drawn on this figure that is communicating that information over to the dependent supply. Okay. So you don't need to worry about, hey, how is this current? How does the dependent supply actually know that that current is coming in? There's some other connection that we haven't drawn here. Okay. So let's go ahead, let's draw in our currents and I'll just, I'll start with the potential source over here and I'm gonna call this one I0. And I have a junction here, so I'll call this one I1, two, I3, I go I4. Next step, probably already ahead of the game here. I'm going to go ahead and label my high and low sides here. Just to remind myself, this is the high, low, high and low. And now we're in a position where we can go ahead and apply Kirchhoff's laws, KVL and KCL. Now, the fact that we have a dependent source doesn't play a role. I mean, it'll, it'll come in. We need to use that relationship, but in terms of how we approach solving the problem, nothing has changed. So go ahead, take a minute, see if you can write down Kirchhoff's equations. You got it? Good, good, good. Well, we take a look at our essential nodes. We notice we have three of them. And so for Kirchhoff's current law, we're going to write down two equations. I'll go ahead and use essential node A and essential node B. Just arbitrarily chosen. So we go ahead. I look at A and I have I0 going in. I have I1 plus I2 coming out. And similarly for B as in boy, I have I2 going in and I drew I3 plus I4 coming out. Done. Can't go any further than that. Okay. Well, let's go over to case VL, Kirchhoff's voltage law. And uh, I'll go ahead and use cyan here just to dis uh, um, specify my loops. There we go. Now, I, I tend to like to go clockwise. So I'll go ahead and use this mesh as one. Um, sure, why don't we make life interesting? I'll use this mesh as two, and I'll use this mesh as three. I didn't have to do that. I could have done some other rigmarole, some other fancy stuff. And that's fine. So I will go ahead, and I'm going to start my lower left hand corner and walk around and I have a 20 volt jump equals 2i naught that's a drop again according to my labels plus a 20i1 drop and I'm back at the beginning so there's one equation let's go ahead and I'll start on the second one uh, so first of all I cross over starting in the lower left hand corner again and I have a jump so I have a 20i1 equals, okay, now I've got a drop of 5i2, and I've got another drop, 10i3. Good, 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 good. And while we're at it, let's do the third one. I'll start there and go my work my way clockwise. And so I have a jump of 10i3 equals a drop right here so I have a 2i4 there's a drop and similarly right here I have another drop right. now keep in mind when I'm doing KVL I'm doing the voltage law so you could think of 
this drop, if you will, I'll write it in as V, I'll put de dependent source. Now, if this, if we were dealing with a capacitor, we have a relationship between the voltage drop and the charge. Or if we're doing the resistor, we have Ohm's law, V equals IR. Or if we were doing an inductor, we would have something like uh, da, 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 V equals L DI DT. Right? All of these give us the relationship between the potential drop and something to do with the current. Here is no different. It's just that here in our, our dependent source is 8I2. So I'm thinking about the voltage drop of the dependent source. I'm just writing in the relationship that we've been given. Okay? Well, now we see we had five unknowns. And indeed, we have our five equations. We are now set up to the point where we go ahead and we get into standard form. And we can go ahead and just use our calculator to hammer through this whole rigmarole. OK, so I took the liberty of already putting the matrix into the calculator. So I'll just go ahead and show you that indeed I have that already in here. So I figured that's not a good use of your time watching me type stuff in. Okay. So that just gives you an idea that, okay, there we go. And we'll go ahead and spit this into reduced row echelon form. Oh, yeah, sometimes, sometimes my brain leaves me for a second there. There we go. Voila, we have something that says, okay, 2 amps for I0, 0 0.8, 4 fifths for I1. It looks like we have a 6 fifths, a 1, and a 1 fifth. All right, so I'll go ahead and get this out of your way. Freeze frame it. And presuming since all of these are in amps and volts, or excuse me, ohms and volts, that means that these are amps all at the end of the day. So you notice, even though we have two potential supplies, right, this one, this 20 volt supply, apparently has a greater potential than the dependent supply on the right hand side. Okay? And we know that because current I4 has a positive value. It's being forced into the positive terminal of the dependent source. Okay? Cool, huh? All right. Well, I know that's not a lot, but I just wanted to say, hey, you know, these dependent sources, we'll treat them exactly like we do any other circuit element. We either have the relationship the, for the potential drop, or as the next problem, we'll have a relationship giving us the current. Okay. So let's go ahead. Let's queue up that problem and see what it looks like. Had it ready. So here's another problem. Okay? And this one I've pulled straight from the textbook. It's uh, problem two seven or 237, excuse me. Okay? And let me go ahead and write out what the question is. So here's, here's the problem. So if V out divided by Vs, so you notice that it has the output potential and it has the input potential, the source potential, if you will. So the ratio of those two is nine. Okay, what is A? Okay. Put a question mark here. You say, what do you mean, what is A? Go ahead, let's just take a look at the circuit for a moment. And we notice that we have, again, another dependent source. So the first thing I would ask you, is this a current source or a voltage source? He said, ah, this one I know. Since it's an arrow, that means it's a current source. So we have a dependent current so source, 
And is it controlled by a current somewhere else in the circuit? Or is it controlled by a potential somewhere else in the circuit? You got it? It is controlled by a current, right? The current in this uh, dependent source is equal to some unknown value, A, times current I1. So we would call this a current, current controlled current supply. A triple C S. So go ahead, take a couple minutes and see if you can hack through the problem. And we'll have to use, I'll say right now, we'll have to use a little bit of finagling. Okay. So take a minute, take an attempt at the problem, go. You got it? Good, 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 good. So let's give it a stab. Okay? So we'll start off, we'll say, hey, how many essential nodes and essential branches do we have? Yeah, let's see. Well, we have one node right here. I'll call that one A. Now, this one's always tricky. Okay, this one always fools me for a while. I have to think about it. And this, so the highlighter comes back out. You notice this whole branch, okay, even this little line that seems to connect two separate circuits together, right? You, you almost have like the left side of the circuit and the right side of the second circuit. This whole branch that I've highlighted in yellow is one node. Multiple wires coming in at the same place. So I'll go ahead. So that whole highlighted region that I had there, that is an individual node. And so I'll, I'll call that one, I don't know, C. And again, I'm choosing that location just arbitrarily. Okay. And then we see that we have a third node. And again, I have to put it somewhere. I'll put it right here, B, as in boy. So we have three essential nodes again, three. How about essential branches? got one, two, three, four, five, six. So six essential branches, meaning that I need, in theory, six equations. That is just to solve for the currents. Okay. We'll see that we actually need a couple more, and for two reasons. Number one, we're not given the value of the voltage supply. So we have six currents that we're trying to find, and we're not given the value of the voltage supply, which means now we're up to seven. And furthermore, we don't know A either. So now we're up to eight. Okay. So we have six currents that we don't know, we don't know the voltage supply and we don't know A. So we're actually going to need eight equations at the end of the day. Okay. So just keep that in mind. This, this counting that we usually do, that's for the number of unknown currents. There's other things that we don't know about this circuit. Not to fret, we'll get there. Okay. Now, notice I'm not asking you to find the current in all the branches. I'm asking you to find what A is. I should say I, the book is. Okay, so let's keep that in mind as well. Okay, that being said, let's attack this with our usual approaches. We are going to apply KCL and KVL. So for KCL, oops, excuse me, I dropped, jumped a step. I'm sure you already have this. Uh, I'll go ahead, I'll call this I naught. I1 is already taken, so I guess I better call this one I2. 
Now keep in mind this entire branch at the bottom is a node. Okay, so I don't think about current flowing this way through that line, right? That's a no-no. This is an entire node. I could redraw this where all those connect together. So let's see, I've got AI here. I guess I'll call this one I3. And I'll call this one I4. I4. And notice here, this is a break on this left-hand side. That's a break. So no current's going to flow there through those two terminals. So I4 is going through that 6 ohm resistor. Okay, we should label our high and lows just to make sure that we don't forget anything. So let's go ahead and label the high and the low. The high and the low. And again. 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 Okay. And remember for these... Um, these current supplies, again, it's like this. There we go. You're pushing. Okay. KCL. So let's go ahead and go at it. Okay. So I will go ahead and again look at, I'll look at node A and node B. So for node A, I have something like I0 is equal to I1 plus I2. For node B, as in boy, here's where life gets interesting. I have AI1 equals I3 plus I4. Okay. Now, quick byline here. This will slow us down a little bit, but quick byline. This second equation I've written. Is that a linear equation or not? Yeah, we're going to have to be careful with the second equation. The second equation is not a linear equation. So if you were trying to use that equation in a matrix, you should have noticed that it's not possible. And the reason for it is that I have an unknown A and an unknown I1. Okay. So that is not linear anymore. It's not some constant coefficient times an unknown variable. I have two unknown variables being multiplied by each other. So you have to be careful there. This equation, this B equation, we're not going to be able to use in our matrix manipulations. Keep that in mind. We'll put that off to the side. Let's go ahead. Our KVLs. Okay. So I will go ahead and I'm going to use some cyan loops again. And I'll just go clockwise through these meshes. Something like this. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I said clockwise. And how many do we need? We need four more. like this go like that there we go so there's four excuse me i said four more we, we need four just to determine the currents so let's go ahead and write down the equations associated with those loops and so what do i have for the first one i have vs equals 3i naught plus 12i2 then I have something like 12i2 equals 12i1. Well, that's convenient. Eh? The third, third mesh, I have something like 3i3 equals... Now, here we have to be careful. So I've got a jump across the 3 ohm resistor, and I have a drop across the current supply. Question for you. What's the voltage drop across the current supply in terms of the other variables given in this problem? Hopefully you see it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one is V out. V out. You notice that the 
other part of the branch is on the low side and then B is on the high side, that difference is still V out. So with the current controlled current supply, you notice that we use the equation, the dependence shows up in Kirchhoff's current law. With the voltage supply, you notice it shows up in Kirchhoff's voltage law. Hopefully that's not a surprise, but I just thought I would emphasize that. So we have V out. So a jump across resistor 3 is a drop across V out. Okay. And then we have our fourth one. We have a jump of V out equals a drop of 6I4. Good so far. Okay. You said, but wait, Greg. This is only six equations. You originally stated that we need eight. And I say, yes, you're right. We have another equation right here. It relates V out to V source. So number, we'll, we'll just circle this rather than rewriting it. But we need, oops, excuse me. We also need this. Here is a seventh equation that is given in the text of the problem. And notice that all of these equations, except for the one that I've previously mentioned, all the rest of these equations are linear in the variables. So we can use those six equations in the matrices. But you say, Greg, we're still one short. And I say, yeah, we are. Here is where we're going to play a little bit of a, for lack of a better word, I'll call it a mathematical trick. See my shifty eyes. What we are going to do is, since we are not asked for the specific values of the current, right? I didn't ask you, what is the current in each of the branches? There's, we can, we don't really care what those currents are. We don't need to find them. I will therefore redefine a new variable. All six of my equations here that I've highlighted, all six of those, I'm going to go through and divide by the voltage source, Vs. So what does that mean? Let me go ahead and rewrite all six of these equations. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've just rewritten all of my equations, all seven of them, in terms of fractions of Vs. So I went through and divided everything by Vs. And now here's the cool thing, is that I can treat each of these terms that I have in parentheses. So I'll go ahead and put parentheses around them. I can treat each of those as if it were somewhat like of a new variable, okay. right? The quantity V out divided by Vs, for example. So now I'm in a position where I'm going to use the indicated equations to solve not for I1 or not for I2, but rather, when I solve, I'll be solving for a ratio, the current in branch 1 divided by the potential supply, the current in branch 2 divided by the potential supply. So there's that. Okay. Also notice, because I have done this, because I've divided through by the potential supply, I need one less equation now. Instead of needing eight equations to solve for the value of everything, I only need seven. And rather than solving for the specific values, I'm now getting ratios. That's the penalty. So let's go ahead and set up our matrix using the six specified equations. Keep in mind, I'm not using the seventh one, again, because it's not linear. Right? I have an unknown 
still be multiplied by a second unknown. Okay, so I will go ahead and write down my column, my variable column real fast. And this is just so that I don't screw anything up. Even then, sometimes I will still screw stuff up. So I've got five entries there. Okay. And now we go ahead and get everything in standard form. Now, one of the other things I'll notice you say, you'll probably notice I didn't write the divided by VS anywhere. I will go ahead and multiply by a scalar. There we go. So in matrices, this is how we indicate a multiplication by a scalar. You're just simply multiply by the scalar, and that's as if each of the individual elements were to multiply by that value, okay? whatever that value is. So let's go ahead. Let's set up the rest of our matrix now. Hopefully that's enough space. And V out, so we have one, and then followed by five zeros. And on the other hand side of this equation, so I'm not writing the augmented one, I am writing just the matrices themselves. Okay, there we go. So the first one, we don't have a V out at all. Then we have one, negative one, negative one, and a couple of zeros. Third equation, oh, excuse me, over here we have a zero. So let's go ahead and solve that. So we'll get V out, I naught, I one, I two, I three, I four, times this one over Vs. And so we have, unless I have fat fingered something, something like nine, one ninth, 1 18th, 1 18th, 3, and 3 halves. Okay. Now keep in mind these are ratios, right? I2 divided by Vs or I1 divided by Vs. Now we're almost home free, but remember we're not after these ratios. We're after the value of A right here. But now we have values for each of the ratios that are in the equation. So we're almost home free. The last thing we need to do is use the last equation that we have. We have A times I naught over Vs equals I1 over the potential, the source potential plus I2 over the source potential. But now we have those values. We have A times, well, I naught is 1 ninth. That fraction is 1 ninth equals 1 18th plus 1 18th, right? I2 and I1. Well, 2 18ths. It's one ninth, and so we get something that says A is equal to one. All that work for such a straightforward result. Okay, well, I think that's enough for right now. I'll leave you to it, but don't forget, hey, Kirchhoff's current law, Kirchhoff's voltage law, even with those dependent sources, you still attack it the same way. Yeah, we have to be a little bit careful about the linearity if we have, excuse me, if we have on a linear equation or not. But at the end of the day, we can still go ahead and attack it in the same manner. So I'll leave it there. Thanks for your attention. I'll see you next time.